Tonight is the first time that we are running the head-on spotlight. What is head-on spotlight? It's an opportunity to meet leading photographers and other people in the industry who are leaders, basically, in, in that area. So we would talk in the future to curators and picture editors and the likes. We're going to run it on a monthly basis. So there are going to be meetings once a month, the first Wednesday on, of the month at 6 o'clock. So it's going to be semi-regular. Um, and we're going to run it pretty much all through the year, minus the festival period and during January, which is the big break in Australia. For those who are not in Australia, this is like the big summer break. Now, we're going to run it as a free event to the members. Membership is um, very modest. It's At the moment, it's $50. As of tomorrow, it's going up to $75. And you will get access to everything that we do for free if you join as members. So encourage you or other people you know, think would be interested to join as members and keep in touch with us. Uh, so the talk will be a very short one. Uh, it'll cover my uh, career over the last uh, 50 years in photography. I've actually been doing it 52 years, believe it or not. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but uh, at least the pictures are there. I always tell people the photographs are like fossils. They're fossils of your life. Um, some people write diaries. Of uh, other people make paintings, but uh, one of the really um, profound, profoundly important things about uh, doing this over the years, I actually have uh, something left, something to see, something that provoke my memories and provoke other people's memories. So uh, it really, um, after all these years, I'm just uh, delighted that I had the tenacity and passion to uh, continue. See this word here. This is the key word. It begins with an M and ends with a D. It is called mind. How do you get to the mind? Who is the mind? Does the mind trick you? Is the mind somebody else? Those are the key questions that you gotta let haunt you. I came to this place to give a talk. They did not like it. They grabbed me. We walked and walked and walked. I did not know where I was going. This is also one of my favorite pictures of called Cat Catcher. This man made a living catching cats. He found these cats. He brought them down to the city. They used the cats for medicine. The witch doctors here, they cut the legs off, the tails, the whiskers. And uh, he got paid per, per cat that he found or stole various people. I've known this man uh, for 25 years. He actually called me this morning. Um, most of, a lot of these people I've kept in touch with. Uh, I think they see me as a father figure. I'm a father figure, a doctor, a teacher, a chauffeur, whatever. So, you know, I don't think there's anybody I've worked with over the years that, that didn't like me. So don't worry about uh, the, what the people think of me. Uh, I can always look at uh, myself in the mirror and say, well, I've been a good friend to a lot of people. I've helped a lot of people. People like me. Uh, they're calling me all the time, all day and night. They'd like to hear from me. My images are meant to straddle the strange line where illusion becomes delusion. Fact is fiction and where the conscious merges with the unconscious. Dreams become real. The real becomes a dream. The dead is alive. The alive, dead. You know, you may say, oh, this worries me, this disturbs me. Good, I'm happy if it does. Anyway, this is quite a profound picture, by the way. Think about it. Who's God? And guess what? What is God spelled backwards? 
but you're an English speaking country, you should know, look at the dog. And during this time, around 2000 to 2002, the drawing started to appear in the work. This is a very important step in my evolution. So drawing started to come into the work about 2001, 2002. And this was a transition period when I still did portraiture, but there's a link to drawing. So this was a very important period. This is a, also one of my favorites over the years. You see how it links sculpture, the boy's arms are like a sculpture. In the background, there's drawing, painting, and the relationship between the mouth of the drawing and the boy's hands is photography. That's about the instant, how things relate to each other in the instant. So here is a good relationship of drawing, painting, sculpture, and photography, or through photography, through photography. Without the instant, uh, the photograph doesn't work. It's a very important thing to understand in photography. It's so much about freezing time. So people, in a lot of cases, create make installations, artists make installations, but they, and then they take pictures of them, but the pictures don't snap because they don't have anything that, they're not about a special time. On my way to the asylum house, I'll often stop at witch doctor markets, scrap yards and pawn shops at various corners of the city in search of odds and ends that I can use in my photographs or provide for those in need. The locations I work in are unsafe, so one has to have a way with people to survive in this business. The Asylum of the Bird's House is surrounded by squatter camps, mine dumps, and abandoned fields. In a, in a way, you you're very scientific, which is your uh, training, and then you move to art, and you still use your brain, your mind, in a similar way, in a very constructed way, yet you create this chaotic imagery. Um, and I, question is, is it some way that you're trying to make sense of what's happening in front of you? You know, even when you talk about the media and, and this sort of stuff, You've got very specific views that are very um, precise way of thinking. It's not it's not just I'm, I I I feel like this. Yet you've got these two elements combined together: the very scientific uh, mind together with the very emotional way of dealing with the world. No, you're absolutely correct about that. It's a very good point. I, I would like to say a, a few things. One is my pictures are about ordered chaos. So it's, it's, it's ordered disorder. So that's what the, that's what the human being and the human mind is uh, doing most of the time. Even an animal is probably doing the same. It's the world's chaos. We don't know what's going to happen one minute to the next. Uh, we think we're in charge, but uh, all of a sudden here comes a virus. We think we're in charge and then uh, we can't sleep at night. We think we feel well and the next morning we woke up with a sore throat. Every, everything's out of control in a way. So the, and, we, and we subconsciously know that. We subconsciously know that. So I think a very important uh, concept or metaphor that runs through the work or, or consideration for me for, of, of mine for the last 20, 30 years is about the word chaos and how chaos dominates our life and how ultimately Chaos wins. This is an important point. You got to accept the point. Chaos wins. You don't know how you're going to die. It wins. To get into symbolism in your imagery, what's the meaning of the wires and how do you construct the images and what sort of material you you put in the images to create this sort of a, a multi-layered meaning within the image and how do you develop that within the image itself? Well, taking a picture is a step-by-step -step, uh, process. It's layer by layer. And sometimes the layers uh, uh, work well together and create an organic whole, and sometimes they break apart. So I never start with any particular ideas. I get to a place and I start to try to find a way forward. There might be a wire, it might be a rat running across the floor, it might be somebody eating a banana. You know, I, 
I have no ideas before I start. And then you have, I sort of try to figure out how to build a coherent uh, picture that's formally coherent and has a, a deeper meaning to it. I think, uh, so there's no f formula. It's an it's a, it's a integration of experience of the conscious mind and, and emotion and the artistic mind and they, how they link together. And I've always told people that uh, if you can explain my pictures easily in words other than through words like enigma, or mysterious or something, like this is probably a bad picture for me.